according to this author, this is Murray Pittock. He is the author of Scotland, the Global History, 1603 to present. He suggests that for many people it's impossible to be both Scottish and British. Uh, let's get the view of Mark Devlin. He joins me now, founder of The Majority. Uh, Mark, how are you feeling? Because this is, it seems to be uh, Murray Pittock speaking for many people, uh, suggesting that there's a, a huge change in people being anti-unionist or it's, it's no longer possible to be Scottish and British as far as from what he's seen. However, Ted, as far as he's concerned, my producer, Scottish producer, it is possible. What are your feelings? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, thanks for inviting me on in. No, I think it's uh, nonsense, really. I think what nationalists want to do always is divide us. They want to divide Scots amongst themselves, first of all. They want to say, if you're not a true, if you're, uh, if you don't believe in independence, you're not a true Scot. Or, and and you're, you're not worth consideration if you believe otherwise. And they want to divide the UK as well. They just like to divide. So, of course, they want to say that they they are the real Scots, but they're no more a real Scot than we are, than I am, or mm. Ted is. I mean, that's we are just, we're all Scots together, and we're all UK citizens together as well. Mm. So, if this, you know, if you very you stand firm on this, that you you do believe there are there are many Scots out there who are very happy to be Scottish and British, they would want to stay within the United Kingdom. Why not then hold another referendum as Nicola Sturgeon is pushing for? Well, we won the first one. Why on earth would we hold, hold another one? And Nicola Sturgeon agreed, as Ted said, that it would be uh, the, the result would be de de decisive, not divisive, as mm -hmm. it turned out. Um, and it would be a result that everyone would respect. Now, here we are. I mean, the day after, basically, she said she didn't respect the result. And we, uh, my organisation, the majority, aims to be a voice for this, the majority of Scots who do not want a second referendum at all. We do not, and in fact, even today, there was a poll released by the Daily Mail and it said that only 29% of Scots want a referendum next year. Mm. Nicola Sturgeon just will not listen to the Scottish people. That's the problem. And the, prob and the second part of that problem is that the media in general want, pushes her viewpoint rather than the viewpoint of the majority Really? Of even, you think, what, are you referring to media in, in England or in Scotland? Oh, yeah, of course. It, it, really? It, yes. For example, that article that you, you're quoting from, mm. the, it was in the Times. Now, we call the Times the Times Appeasement Division because the journalists there are constantly appeasing Scottish national, nationalism. There is nothing that Scottish nationalists could do that they really? won't write about. If it, was English that... if it was English nationalists, the nationalists, they wouldn't give them the time of the day. Would you argue, would you argue that this is uh, the media reporting on precisely what the First Minister is, is campaigning on, pushing, pushing for, that going to the Supreme Court to try and push through uh, holding another independence referendum, that's something that can't not be reported on, for example. Yeah, well, it can be reported on, but it's how it's reported on. It's always reported on as being, here's plucky Nicola Sturgeon up against Westminster and against have you the met evil the, Have you met the English press? So I don't... I don't in, in well, fact, I, I could argue it's the other a way. Large section of this, of the, a large section of the UK press likes to use Nicola Sturgeon to bash the UK government. We see it all the time here. Now, there are some exceptions to that. We'll admit that. But there is a massive amount of uh, a massive amount of the UK media that will use her to, uh, as I said, to bash the UK government and indulge her uh, constitutional fantasy. Mm -hmm. and instead of saying, for example, there was a broadcaster here, up here last week and indulging her uh, in, on all levels, instead of just saying to her, you, you, you can't get this. It's a power grab. You're not entitled to those powers. The UK government, the, the people of Scotland limited your powers. Why are you going against their constitutional wishes? And very few, uh, very few uh, UK commentators do that. And but we are seeing, beginning to see a turn, a tide, a turn in the tide. Sorry, we're beginning to see that it is beginning to change now. And one of the reasons for that is that politicians like Liz Truss are being, being more firm. Okay, let's let's bring in a caller. Uh, David's calling from Glasgow just to get a, another view. Uh, David, how, how what do you think about how things are in Scotland right now in terms of people's attitude towards? towards the union do you think this is just uh, nationalists just hyping things up as mark is suggesting hi claudia yeah and hi, hi mark as well yeah no what i would say is here's let, let's look at the, the basics of this yeah. yeah whatever the rights whatever the wrongs are if a country if a nation decides within itself 
that they want to hold a referendum for whatever subject, let's call it independence, then that's that people's choice. Now, people could say, you know, you look at the SNP and you look at the Greens, for instance, in Scotland, there's been a high percentage of voting records for them. So it's not so much that the SNP are wrong, bad, indifferent, or, or all the rest of it. It's the people that are voting for them. But, Mark, do we know that people are... I mean, first of all, the SNP and Nicola Sturgeon, she has been losing uh, support and, and, and voters, which is why she needed the Green Party, as you know. Uh, but do we also know that people were voting for the SNP, voting and standing on calling for another referendum? No, it's not possible. Basically, the Scottish, uh, the Scottish elections are for the Scottish Parliament, and the Scottish Parliament has is not allowed to make laws on reserved matters. So any, it's, it would be like a, you know Glasgow Council saying that they want to stop immigration into the UK. It's not w- within its remit to do that. If you want constitutional change, you need to have a referendum. Mm. And the people in Scotland in 2014 decided what the constitutional arrangement was. They're going to remain in the UK and the opposite side said, we're going to do this result at, for a generation. So mm, that's David, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll go by that. David, is, is, is that a fair okay. point? The referendum was less than 10, 10 years ago. Well, do we know yes. that people do want to have another I, referendum? I, I, am, I am one for division doesn't help anybody. Yeah? But we're sitting in a society, we're sitting in an environment, a political environment, particularly when you go to Westminster over the last number of years, it's just been a disarray. So people in Scotland are, are trying to refocus themselves on where is the solution. And they're finding the solution within Scotland. Now, you look at the last referendum in 2014, right? The material change, the material difference was the Brexit. Mm. And that's why we're now in a situation we are today because... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is, this is, I think this is actual, absolute nonsense. Uh, the, the, the Edinburgh Agreement, as Ted said earlier, basically okay, said for Mark, device, Mark, a, 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 a decisive result that everyone would respect. And that's the way it okay, goes. But there's Mark, nothing in yeah, there Mark, about material Mark, change. There's nothing in there Mark, about wait, Brexit. There's nothing Mark, in there wait, about me ask, Putin. Yeah, Mark, there's nothing wait, like that. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Did a high percentage of people in Scotland vote to remain in the European Union? It's not that the the, U, the vote wasn't a UK wasn't a Scotland only vote. Hold on. By the same it, 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 by the same argument, you could say that, that London fact? should declare independence because uh, it yeah, also we're, voted we're to go about, out of the, about Scotland. Out of the UK. We're talking about Scotland. No, we're not moment. talking about Scotland. We're talking about UK vote. That's the point here. You would like to okay, make it about so, Scotland. It's not about Scotland. No, I'm not. This whole argument, in fact, is not about that. Hold on a minute. I am one of these persons, for instance. I'm not 100 percent. 100 percent for independence, but over the years the the attitudes okay. of Westminster government oh, David, have pushed me in that direction. I'm so, so going to have to wrap it up there. David from Glasgow, thank you so much for your call, and Mark Devlin, so good talking to you, getting a real insight in terms of as you can really see the divisive views in Scotland when it comes to uh, independence referendum. Uh, you are watching Claudia Eliza on Talk TV.